Now we are joined by John Wilson, who's running for King County Assessor. So go ahead with your two-minute introduction. So I'm going to use a little visual aid here. These are two of the reasons why I'm running. They're my daughters. Um, and uh, it revolves around family and housing. Um, uh, we adopted the, the girls when they were infants, and they're now 31 and 27. Uh, one of them actually doesn't live far from here, over on 15th Avenue Northwest. But she pays nine and a quarter a month for housing. And she works as a chef downtown, but she's not making $15 now. So it's a struggle. And I'll admit every once in a while I get a call, Daddy, could you help a little this month? And Daddy will step up. I see the job as assessor having been chief deputy assessor. I was chief of staff for Ron Sims. And, and, and especially for my tenure with Ron, I, I think we as progressive Democrats have an obligation to try to fix things and solve problems that we see. And clearly the most present one is the housing crisis in our community. And there are things that the assessor can do uniquely, not necessarily because of what's in the statute, but by the tools and the data that the assessor inherently collects in his or her job. And I know how to marshal that data into action. I already did some of that when I was chief of deputy. Um, the other thing that I really want to address, too, is we've got to go down and be effective in Olympia and reform the senior exemption program so that we keep it in place and make it work given how economics have changed. And while we're at it, let's make sure that we include disabled vets out of Afghanistan and Iraq. That's the least we can do for them coming home. And then finally, I want an assessor who, who will both be accessible, promote diversity, but also try to promote tax diversity. We desperately need tax reform in our community. And if I'm elected, I'll push for that. Great. Thank you. So now we have our uh, four prepared questions. And feel free to turn it over now. But don't, don't leave with it. So you can read along while we uh, say them aloud. So I think, uh, Liz, we do number one. These are two minutes uh, answers. What is your opinion of how the assessor's office is currently organized, and what changes would you make? Um, I think a number of the things that, that were initiated while I was chief deputy, unfortunately, have stalled or slowed and need to move forward. We, we live in a rapidly changing world, both in terms of external dynamics, but how we can do the job better. Uh, one of the prime examples is, for example, frankly, a mobile app that we developed for the iPad um, has not been thoroughly updated and reformatted for three years now. In the realm of mobile technology, that's an eon. Uh, there was an opportunity for the department actually three years ago to get onto a new version of this, but the current incumbent refused to ever sign a contract that would have provided the department with, with free lifetime updates to the app, uh, a 250 thousand dollar credit and also a profit sharing with the private sector developer of it. Um, I think so there are technology things we can do. We're also frankly leaving money on the table um, that better use of technology and savvier use of that would allow us to bring in. When I was chief deputy one of the things we did is we went back and we mapped where we had commercial business accounts but no personal property account. We put on the value rolls 300 40 million dollars of additional value and brought in 30 million dollars of hard revenue. That can be done not totally again because we captured frankly a large chunk of it when I, I led that effort the first time, but we can go back and we can get more of it. There are other examples like that too. Mary, number two. Yes. In what ways can the assessor use the bully pulpit to advocate for a more fair tax structure? I, I think. Part of it is for us to start to look at um, what's our total tax mix to better educate legislators and, and, and others about the, the, the right role of the property tax. You know, I was talking to a, a couple people this morning about this, that, that, you know, and, and I saw you know we passed the emergency radio uh, levy last night. Thank God for that. Mm -hmm. But we're developing, unfortunately, an overdependence upon levies. Uh, because we don't have a balanced tax system. Mm -hmm. We have to go back and look at that. And I think we have to be creative and be willing to sort of think out of the box. Um, I, I've been a long time supporter of an income tax. Um, 
my old boss, Mr. Sims, ran on that in 2004, and he was right to run on that. Um, unfortunately, in 2010, they got clobbered at the polls, and I don't know if we're ever going to see a statewide income tax come back, at least frankly, in my lifetime. That said, there are other ways to pursue tax reform that the assessor can take of talking about could we look at different ways to structure the present property tax system that perhaps graduates it in some manner, that creates greater progressivity to it and less regressivity, and allows you to rebalance some of the other taxes. So those are some of the things that I think we could do. Clayton, number three. <clears throat> to what extent does the assessor have room to make policy decisions that affect an individual's property taxes? Um, that's a good question. Um, well, on the one hand, obviously, the, the, the office goes through a, a six-year cycle of individual physical inspections of your property. That can have a bearing on, on what happens. Um, Policy-wise, uh, it, it in part comes down to uh, how do we apply certain exem exemptions that are already on the books, such as for uh, you know critical areas or you know farm farmlands and things like that. Um, th there are other things too that I think the assessor's office could do that would, would help, um, and I, I'm not clear from the question, are you trying to affect an individual's property taxes downward or upward? So we asked the same question of all candidates, which means we can't clarify the question. All right. So what, however the spirit moves you to answer. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you know, I, I, I think part of it is making sure that we're trying to set fair values and that also we, we, we capture when changes have happened. Um, you know, what, what I, I've seen, um, uh, and it's more an administration function rather than a policy function, but w we largely gave up during the budget cuts our, our auditing function. Those need to be restored because, again, that's another opportunity where we're leaving money on the table. And other taxpayers, frankly, are getting away with things while you and I pay our full and fair share. That needs to be. Great. Uh, then Renee, number four. Okay, as assessor, how would you help educate the public on how their property taxes are determined and how their taxes fund the important government services? I, I think there are a couple things that you can do. You, you know, one of the things that I did when I came into the office is I, I totally rebuilt the website because it was awful. It was kind of a bad digital warehouse. And, and part of, and, and it's been redesigned recently, and there's some problems with that, but we'll go into that a little bit. But one of the things I tried to do is we had a, a, a rotator, as it was called, but a, I, I purposely put something on the home page that showed examples of the various local services that were paid by your property taxes. Because I really felt it was important to start to drive home to the public that these money go for very real services. Uh, in some cases, life and death services. And I, I think so. I think it's part of using the website, and this is something where I think in the new design they've lost that, is, is tying that to people so they better understand it. I think also an assessor with my background has a better ability to, to use multimedia and social media to tell the story about why property taxes are important uh, and getting out and about. I think there are things we can do with like senior exemption programs and, and other cu customer outreach where we still frankly, or at least the office does, relies too much on people having to come to it rather than it go out to the public. And I'd really like to see us push more of our services so both there were people out in the community, but that also we, we made services more readily available to people online. Right now, 56% of the people that touch the county's overall website are attaching to it by some kind of mobile device. Mm -hmm. The office needs to become much more mobile, so. but we also need to work with people who aren't necessarily using a computer. Great. So now we'll open it up to follow-up questions. These are one-minute answers. Uh, people can ask whatever they want. I will start with my own question. 
So for years, I've always asked this question of challengers to incumbents. So you're running against an incumbent, and nobody uh, is entitled to any particular elective office. But is there a particular reason uh, why Lloyd uh, Hara should no longer be King County Assessor? I, I think we live in a rapidly changing world. And um, I, I think the office inherently these days requires somebody who is more technologically savvy, who understands how to build collaborative structures and solutions to problems better, and who can go down to Olympia and actually get things done. Uh, the, the, the property exemption bill that I mentioned as far as the commercial real estate tax, I pushed through Olympia with the help of Dead of Eddie. I got it through both chambers of the house with one dissenting vote. You know, for, for, for my years of working both on Capitol Hill and working for, for Ron and that, I know how to make things happen. I, I think that the next assessor has to also be somebody who's willing to be more of an advocate for housing in this community and not simply say, I'm placing fair values on it. That's not enough. Okay. Additional questions? Clayton? Um, could you tell us something about your life story? How much time do we have? Um, <laughs> 60 seconds. In my head. The life of John Wilson, uh, 60 seconds. That's a very short uh, Born in the Midwest, grew up out here, went to the University of Washington, uh, was managing editor of the UW Daily in my sophomore year, went to work for the Seattle Times. I also said the only way I'm ever going to stop that kid writing these stories about me is take me back to Washington, D.C. I did uh, two and a half years there. Uh, I got tired of uh, living in D.C. Uh, uh, with my wife and then one kid and then eventually two. We moved back out west. I worked for the Northwest Power Planning Council and got to work with a guy named Dan Evans. And God, we could use a lot more Republicans like him. Um, and uh, went into King Broadcasting and that. Um, I, I disappointed my parents in 1972 when I boldly announced I was voting for a governor and they were frankly good Midwestern Republicans and uh, I never looked back. They still love me, but, you know, uh, <laughs> there's some doubt. Um, married in, in this community 41, 42 years ago. Um, lived here, will probably continue to live here, I hope, for the rest of my life. Thank you. All right. Additional questions? So I've got another one. So just, um, my understanding is you used to work in the assessor's office mm -hmm. while the current assessor was working there. You were a deputy right. assessor, assessor while he's assessor. So um, I, I have no facts to back this up, but people say, oh, this is a sour grapes campaign, something like that. And I'm sure that's not your perspective, so I just wanted to give you an opportunity sure. to sort of... You know, what was your experience like in the assessor's office? What were the circumstances of your departure? And why are you running against your former boss? Yeah, th th this, this isn't personal. This is professional and a question of who can do the better job. If I didn't think I could do a better job, I wouldn't run. I will also tell you, though, that, that over time, I increasingly came to question some of the judgment calls for me. I got worried very early on that one of the first things he wanted to do when he took office was he wanted to cut the salaries of the women who do customer service. Uh, they were all women over 50. Uh, three of the four of them were African American. They were earning about 35 to 37 five a year. When I looked into it, I went back to him and I said, we can't do that, it's not right. Um, and, and there were other things. And even recently, the fact that, you know, he built this app called LocalScape. Well, LocalScape isn't so local that he went offshore to have it built. I wouldn't do that. Um, I won't take money from slumlords, which he has. All right, thank you. Additional questions, we have time for a few more. Assessing is maybe something we just don't know a lot about. I think <laughs> it's hard to know what questions to ask. Is there anything else that you would like to say that none of our questions yeah. Well, you know, I, I, I think the key with assessing is, is not only to, to make sure you're fair and accurate, but, but you, you've got to figure out in this day and age, how can you use new tools? Like one of the things that I found when I was there is, is we were finding, for example, especially in the unincorporated areas of the county, 
where people would not get building permits. Um, mm -hmm. And they go build a house. In fact, even in sometimes incorporated in Lake Forest Park, we came across a house where it was a couple where she was a realtor, he was a builder. They knew what our inspection cycle was, so they built it in between physical inspections. And so they, they built it, lived in it, and sold it all before the next physical inspection, never paid taxes on it. Wow. Um, so there are things that, that, that the assessor can do to, to, to tighten that up. I also think that, that the assessor has an ability to help streamline how we handle property taxes to make them more fair and more efficient. So another question. So um, you're, this is a nonpartisan office, and it's countywide, and um, of course you'd be representing all taxpayers uh, throughout the county. Um, I, my understanding is um, in reaching out to um, Republicans, you've mentioned previous support for Rob McKenna, and I'll mm -hmm. state right off the bat that's not necessarily disqualifying at all. Uh, I'd just like maybe give you a minute to talk about um, uh, you know, sort of your own understanding of being a Democrat, and if you sort uh, supported Rob McKenna in the past, uh, under what under what circumstances? Um, I, what, when uh, he ran for AG the very first time, I, I supported Rob after my friend Mark Sidrin uh, didn't make it through the primary. Uh, I had worked with Rob when I worked for Ron. Um, we didn't always agree, but I, I found that he was honorable to deal with. Um, and was somebody we could, could, could talk to. Um, you know, Rob endorsed me because he knows the kind of work I've done and that hopefully my word counted and, and that. Um, so, you know, I'm not, I'm not embarrassed at all about having his support. Uh, you know, uh, if, if you look at the PDC records, you'll also see that I donated to Jay. Uh, and actually, Jay and I are alums of the same high school. Uh, so I've, I've known the governor for a long time. Who, who did Ralph McKenna run against in that race? In Deborah Sin. Deborah Sin. Deborah Sin. Deborah Sin. Deborah Sin. Oh, okay. Right. We have time for maybe one more follow-up question. Does anybody have one? A lot of people appeal, right? Like, lots of people appeal. Rich people appeal, poor people appeal, everybody. What do you think about the appeals process? Is it today? you think it's working? Is it good? Are we being well served? It's gotten better. And some and, and people must get some changes, right? It, it, change. Sure. I, I think one of the things that, that I spearheaded that I think has helped overall is we built an online appeals platform, the first one mm -hmm. in, in the state, that gives you the ability to look up the comps. Uh, it is, even gives you a, a tax calculator so you can figure it out. Mm -hmm. What I found early on is we had people that thought, well, if I lower my value ten thousand dollars, you're going to send me a check for ten grand, right? Mm -hmm. No, it doesn't work that way. Um, I, I think as the market has come back and assessed values have lined up closer with um, uh, what people perceive to be their, their property value, that's in part what's driven appeals down. Mm -hmm. uh, I think also the way we've collected data and constant improvement that we've made in field collection while I was there has mm -hmm. helped also. There's a way to go. We also frankly need to do a better job on the commercial side because the commercial market is both more complicated yeah. and, and in the last five years it has yeah. changed a lot so mm -hmm. that I think we have to really fine tune what we go after and, and how we make sure we get the right number there. Okay. Does that yeah, thank you. So we're about out of time. If you want to take 30 seconds for a closing statement. Well, thank you for inviting me here tonight. Uh, and um, I, I, I've enjoyed discussions like this, both this one and the ones I've had throughout the county. I love your support. Um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, we are at a point for the next five years where we are facing dramatic change in property and housing that requires somebody that's a fresh look. I am that. I am an agent of change, mm -hmm. and I hope to be that agent come next month. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.